worked up my dishcloth in this nice blue color here. And I've stopped it so I can show you how to do the border. So I'll be using a different color yarn to show you how to do the actual body of it so that you can really see the post stitches. Now, if you haven't done post stitches before, don't worry. They're not that hard. It's just a difference in where you place your hook. I'll show you that definitely slowly so that you can get it when you are working. So I remember at first I was a little confused by front and back post stitches, but once you get the hang of it, it is super easy. So we'll work in a lighter color. I'll show you how to do the body and then we'll jump into the border with this swatch right here. Let's get started. Materials you're going to need for this project include one skein of cotton yarn. I am using Lion Brand's Mako cotton, which does have to be hand washed. So if that is a problem, you can definitely substitute any cotton yarn. I'm going to use this lighter color to start out, like I said, and then switch over here. You also need an eye 5.5 millimeter hook, some scissors, and a yarn needle. And that is it for this project. If you want some recommended substitutes for this yarn, check out the blog posts linked below in the description. To begin, our starting chain is 32. So I've gone ahead and chained 32. And now we're going to just work double crochet. So if you've never worked a double crochet before, yarn over. And we're going to work in the fourth chain from the hook. So I work on the underside of my chain. One, two, three. And here's our fourth one. So you insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. You can see I now have three loops in my hook. Yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through the last two. Okay, I'll show you that again. We're gonna double crochet all the way down. So if you are an experienced crocheter, go ahead and double crochet all the way to the last chain. You should end up with 30 stitches, including this turning chain. Okay, so yarn over, insert your hook, Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and draw through two. Yarn over and draw through the last two. Okay, go ahead and repeat that all the way down to the end of your chain. And like I said, you should have 30 stitches, including this chain three here, which is our turning chain. All right, now when you've done your row of double crochet, it should look like this. And now you're ready to start your next row. There are two ways to do this. You can chain three which is what I wrote in the instructions because that is the most common start for double crochet. But to get the edges nice and even like I have here, what I actually use is called a chainless double crochet. So if you don't wanna use the chainless, you can definitely chain three, either one. If you wanna do the chainless, you lift up your yarn a little bit. It's about twice the width of your shaft, your hook. So right there, you hold it tight right here. If you don't hold it right here at the top of the loop, it's gonna you're gonna be twisting it and it's gonna come loose. So hold it, bring the hook towards you, and around like this so that it almost makes like another loop. Like I said, if you accidentally let go, it does that. So just untwist it. So whenever I have to untwist mine, which happens occasionally, I start over, turn towards you, and around. Now yarn over and pull through right here, yarn over, and pull through these last two. And it actually makes a much neater edge, and then when you come back, you can crochet underneath these two loops, and so it makes it a little more like a regular stitch as opposed to into a turning chain. So the only turning chain I work into is the one down here that, that I began with, because you can't really hope that one. Go ahead. So now we're gonna work the post stitches. Now for the next one, we're gonna work a front post. Now usually you would stick your hook right here underneath these two loops, it's for a regular stitch. For a post stitch, you're actually gonna put it in between these two and come around. This is what's called a post, okay? So insert it between, so in, right in front of the stitch you want, we're working with the second one. So right in front of it, go around from, they call it front to back to front, which I remember that took me forever to be like, what? So having a video is definitely helpful. And then yarn over and pull up a loop and work it just the same. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And this really brings 
this post to the front, these together. The next one's going to be a back post. So we're going to do the opposite. So yarn over, come behind though. Okay, so it may feel a little weird. You're going to come behind your work, put it right beside that stitch you just finished and go around this post. Okay, so we went this way for the front post. Now we're coming this way from behind and then come to the back. Now you'll yarn over. Pulling up a loop's a little bit trickier here. I'm going to turn it. There we go. You still have your three loops and then you work just like normal. Draw through two, draw through two, and see this pulls it to the back. So let's do that again. We want to go front post, so from the front to the back, and then come back out to the front, and work a regular double crochet, and then from where you come down behind the work, and stick your hook through, okay, right here, and then pull up a loop and continue your double crochet. Okay, so repeat these two down to the end and you'll get down to this very last turning chain right here and you're just going to work a regular double crochet right in the top of the turning chain and then we'll be ready for our next row. So after your first row, it should look like this. All right, pulled it in just a little bit. It was a little, looked a little bit longer. And oops, I'm upside down. There we go. And now we're going to work the next row, which it will just repeat rows two and three over and over. So the first time is to either work your chain three or your chainless double crochet, just like before. All right. Now it's we're gonna work the opposite. So you see how this one now on this row. It was a back post double crochet. And now you're looking at the front post part of it. So you're going to do the opposite of each of these things. So since this one is a front post and very prominent in the front, we're going to do a back post. So come behind, just like I do before, reach up and grab it, and then work a regular double crochet stitch. Okay, and the next one you can see is a back post. Look how it's like hiding back here. So you're going to do a front post around it. So go down in between, catch that post and come up, yarn over and pull the loop just like we did before. So you're just going to go back and forth with these. You will do a back post. So if you ever get confused about which one you're on or you set it down, I know that happens sometimes, just look at what's going on. Like so this one you can tell is clearly in the back. So you just want to do a front post around it. And alternating these gives you a nice, really thick fabric. So let me you know, show you this one again. Super thick, good texture, and it's really good for getting in there and like scrubbing things. And so once you get this row done, you'll just back front, back front, all the way down. Work a regular double crochet in the last, the turning chain. So either your chainless double crochet or your chain three. And then just repeat those two rows. So if it is an even row, so like the next row will be row four, you would do front, back, front, back. And then your odd rows are back, front, back, front. And how you can really tell is that your yarn tail here, if you're right-handed, it's going to be on your left when you're working an odd row and then on your right when you're working an even row. And obviously that's different for, if you're left-handed, then obviously it will be the opposite of that. So it will be on your right when you're working an odd row and on your left when you're working an even row. Okay, and that's a good way to always tell um, what side you're on is to check out your yarn tail. So right now I'm right-handed, I'm on a, um, an odd row, <laughs> row three. So I know I'll be flipping this video for my left-handed friends, one of my really good friends is a lefty, and man, there's so many things that I never thought about in the world um, that are challenges for left-handed. So I always, I try to always flip my videos. So just go ahead and repeat those two rows until it is a square. Okay, mine was seven inches wide, 
and it's now seven inches tall, and we're gonna go in and work the border. All right, so now I'm switching to my darker color here with my basic border. So we're going to chain one. So we've already turned, so we're working right across our stitches here. And even though they're post stitches, you can see the top of them still look the same. So go ahead in the first one, single crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet. So we're just going to repeat this. So chain one, skip the next, single crochet. All right, so repeat that all the way down to the end and you'll be at your turning chain. Okay, and I've just worked a single crochet in this next to last stitch and then here in my turning chain, I'm going to single crochet, chain one, and single crochet in the same space. Okay, this will turn my corner and now I'm gonna chain one I'm going to single crochet here on the side. All right, so you can see where it's connected here. We're going to chain one. We're going to skip that, okay, the top of that row. And go right here around this post, the single crochet, chain one. Again, skip that part and then right around the post. So you can clearly see the holes. We're just single crocheting once right in there and then chaining one to skip over the top of our stitch. Okay, so you're gonna work this all the way around. Each corner you get to, you're gonna work single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and then go down the line that way, making sure you have a single crochet and a chain one space. Now I've returned to the same place right here where I began. You can see my first single crochet right here and I'm just going to single crochet and chain one and join to this very first single crochet with a slip stitch. Okay, you see my chain one right here so this kind of looks like it might be the single crochet, but it is not. And I'm going to join right here, slip stitch, and we'll single crochet again. <laughs> there we go. Now, if you like it like this, you've got a very basic border and it'll be a little bit smaller, but you can definitely do this if you like. However, I want mine to be a little bit taller, so I'm going to chain one. I'm going to single crochet right here in my first single crochet, and then right here in my chain space, and now I'll chain one, skip my single crochet, single crochet in the chain space, chain one, skip that single crochet, single crochet in the chain space, so it's like a seed stitch or a moss stitch. It's got several names. I've seen it called in crochet. And so work your way down to the end, working just in those chain spaces. And I'll show you how to navigate the corners. I just like this look better than all single crochet because single crochet can make a project so heavy around the sides. And this already has a lot of bulk to it because of our texture stitch. So I wanted a bit of a lighter border that still would hold up well, but that was not going to flare or be cumbersome with our textured stitch. Okay, so now we have two single crochet in a row and then our corners. So go ahead, skip this next one. Single crochet here. This was part of our single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And now in the chain space, which is hiding in there, you're going to single crochet, chain one, single crochet to turn our work. And then you'll chain one, skip the, skip the single, and then 
work in your chain spaces again. So same thing. Chain, skip the, uh, chain one, skip a single crochet, and then single crochet in a chain space. So you're just doing the opposite. So work your way all the way around to the beginning here. When you get back to the corner, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're just going to single crochet, chain one, and join with a slip stitch to our first single crochet. And we'll just repeat that as many times as you want for our border. For me, I did, I'm going to finish what you've seen in the uh, pictures is four rounds. So this is already two. I'm just going to add two more. And it's the same thing each time around. Working the chain, you know, one little chain space in the corner with your single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and then working down the rows and connecting here at the end with a slip stitch. Working a single crochet, chain one, and a slip stitch. And that will complete your textured dishcloth. Thank you.